The European Business Group has called on Beijing to provide greater clarity on the type of relationship it wants to have with foreign companies. The EU Chamber of Commerce in China says European firms could play a major role in the post-COVID recovery, but are struggling to understand recent policy changes. Well, let's talk now to Isabel Hilton, who's the founder and senior advisor of China Dialogue. Good to see you again, Isabel. Uh, so European okay. businesses uh, want clarity on China's approach to business. Uh, what are they worried about? What, what are the concerns they're raising? Well, there are a number of them, and there have been recent regulations and some, some, some new uh, rules in China and some recent actions by the Chinese authorities that have worried uh, European firms. And some of these are to do with China's concerns on national security and how those are playing out in the business world. So, for example, companies that do do due diligence for investors have been raided. They're now no longer sure what's permissible, what's not permissible. At the same time, quite a lot of, of, of uh, economic information that used to be available is much harder to find. Uh, there are certain, certain restrictions on what's available. So there's, a, there's an air of uncertainty. There's a feeling that um, foreign companies are really not as welcome as they once were, despite very high-level statements to the contrary. And so there's a, there's a feeling of uncertainty about the five-year perspective, shall we say, that people aren't pulling out exactly. But I think that there's a lot of concern about investing for the, for the longer term because they really don't know what the conditions are going to be. Business uh, doesn't like uncertainty, of course. Uh, what specific actions yes. or policies uh, would they like to see from China? Well, I think they would like reassurance on, and some very clear rules. Chinese regulations and Chinese laws tend to be rather vague and very much open to interpretation. And if you're if you're actually doing, you know, work which you feel uh, is no longer in favour, then you know you're going to be worried. So clarity uh, from the Chinese authorities about what is permissible in terms of, for example, due diligence, as I said, um, and some reassurance. Um, I mean, at the moment, even, you know, lots of discussions are going on about investment, but the invitations aren't really coming through. And I think that's because there are uh, provincial authorities and city authorities in China that are also rather nervous about the landscape. So a, a much stronger direction to, um, to uh, provincial and city governments in China about you know, who is welcome and who isn't. Reassurance that the market will remain open, because that's another concern, a feeling that you know, as China has its own economic difficulties, that the favors are going to be, of course, for Chinese companies and not for, um, for, for, for foreign companies. And, and some, some acknowledgement that the geopolitical tensions which have arisen uh, in the last few years won't overwhelm the desire to do business. So how important is China's stance on foreign businesses and investments uh, for European companies in particular? Well, it's been very important because, you know, China's been at the center of globalization for the past 25 years, nearly 30 years. And, and that's been very good for China. But it's also been very good for companies that deal with, uh, with China and invest in China. And there's been enormous investment, both in manufacturing, but also in sales uh, in China. So there are companies in Germany, for example, um, auto companies that sell 40% of their output in China. Now, that's all in doubt at the moment. We've really got a perfect storm. We just have heard about um, electric vehicles. So, you know, China is seems set to really damage the market uh, for those companies, both in China and perhaps in Europe. So there's just a, a real uncertainty now and a sense that we're at a kind of pivot point for globalization and things are really going to go into, in some senses, it, into reverse. Now, that's good for some, for some countries around China where supply chains might be moved out of China because of the uncertainty and into Vietnam or India. So that'll be good for them. But, you know, that takes time and expense and so on. So, you know, it's not, it's not a great moment. It's, it's a moment when, the, when we have a global downturn and it's very hard to see, you know, what's going to get us out of it. Isabel, good to talk to you as always. Thank you for joining us. That's Isabel Thank Hilton, uh, founder and senior advisor of China Dialogue.